it begins on a dark night. Look at this. You're not gonna find another girl like her in a million years. It's all so magical. Done it, and I've never had fun. Sorry, Rod. That fez, someday a boo. And does the say? Never done it, and I've never had fun. Sorry, Rod. That fez, someday a boo. Do you trust me? Just just never say to me. Have my life. Wonderful time of my You should say love. Father and does the say? Just just never say to me. Have my life. Wonderful time You should say love. Father and
Enough's enough. Well, this is it, folks, the big event. This evening, one man will attempt to recreate the suicide of noted pedophile Jeffrey Edward Epstein. It will certainly be a feat like nothing the world has ever seen and could only be attempted by the undisputed superstar of Daredevils, Stephen Knieven Crowder. Good evening, I'm Audio Wade. We are here for an attempt at what is no doubt one of the most anticipated fake suicide recreations in history. If you're tweeting about this evening, and Lord in heaven, I hope you are, be sure to use the hashtag Epstein didn't kill himself. And please be certain to tweet your questions or comments to S. Crowder, which we will read live later in the program just prior to the stunt being performed. 
And tonight, through Black Friday, if you join up at louderwithcrowder.com slash mug club with promo code Epstein, you'll get $20 off. Again, that's louderwithcrowder.com slash mug club promo code Epstein. $20 off your subscription. Now, a lot went into this evening, and we have here Stephen himself to give us a closer look. Stephen, tell the folks at home what they can expect to see tonight. Yeah, well, thanks, Audio Wade. I appreciate you doing a bang-up job. Uh, first, there, let me be clear. There are about one in a million details that we cannot go over or account for uh, in this experiment. But let me be the first to say, or let me say this first on the outset. The number that we are trying to hit on uh, that, was it, newtometer scale? My engineer's not here with me right now. It's 55 kilograms. 121 pounds of force. 55 kilograms, 121 pounds of force is what we're looking to hit to recreate a scenario in which Jeffrey Epstein's suicide is even plausible, is even, even remotely possible, and that's the low end. Uh, keep in mind the story that we've been told, as you, you know from the New York Times, Washington Post, is that uh, Jeffrey Epstein knelt toward uh, the floor with enough force that he broke several bones in his neck on a rope that he fashioned himself from, um, from orange bed sheets. Some people thought the bed sheets were paper, that's not true. Apparently, they were actually uh, real bed sheets. And keep in mind, too, something that uh, a lot of people may not know, that um, when administering death by hanging, the number to ensure death that has always been used historically is 1,000 to 1,250 foot-pounds of force. Now, why aren't you using that number, Stephen? Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get to that in just a second. As and I and isn't there something about the hyoid bone? Yeah. Uh, I'm glad that you, uh, you brought that up. Many in the media, they've tried to paint kind of people who are even remotely skeptical of the Epstein suicide as conspiracy theorists. And they often uh, point to the hyoid bone, claiming that Jeffrey Epstein fractured that bone. It only requires 35 pounds of force to fracture. And of course, that makes it seem as though it's very easy, very plausible, the most likely scenario uh, that Jeffrey Epstein hung and killed himself. I believe it's a red herring for several reasons. Couldn't be less relevant, uh, couldn't be less relevant to this for one. Uh, the measurement being cited that people are often using, this was in a laboratory where they took a hyoid from a cadaver and put it into a vice, right? And that's not the same as a real world scenario where you've got cartilage and tissue and neck fat, as, as I well know. Then number two, most importantly, Jeffrey Epstein had three fractures in his neck. And you will see us trying to re recreate that here in a second. Three fractures, including thyroid cartilage, which is much more difficult to fracture than the hyoid bone. So let me kind of paint a scenario. If you get into a car wreck, right, you get, you get jostled around and you break your pinky, you break your wrist, but you also break your femur. Um, I can't just recreate a scenario where I break a pinky and say, well, that's good enough for me, call it a day. We need to recreate a scenario in which the most severe fracture is accounted for. And that is what we are trying to do uh, this evening, mimicking the force that would be required to create all three fat fractures that were found in the suicide. Oh boy, this all sounds very dangerous, Stephen. I, to the untrained eye, yeah. Well, I don't think it will exactly tickle, uh, Stephen. I didn't say it would tickle. Did you say it would tickle? I didn't say it would tickle. I just said it's dangerous, but, you know, I'm fine doing it. That's what I do. I don't think you could pull this off. It's also important to note, uh, only 8% of victims, by the way, victims of hanging suicide uh, are found with, with broken hyoid bones. Keep in mind that these are suicides by hanging. They typically aren't kneeling, right? It's usually they're, they're brooksing themselves like in Shawshank, knocking the stool out and hanging from a beam in the ceiling. It's a I'm, dead hang. I'm familiar. It's a great film. And by the way, very similar tonight, and we're going to be crawling through miles of shit just to make this happen for you. So please use the promo code and uh, get your $20 off Mug Club so this will all be worth it. Earn this. Uh, something else that we need to keep in mind as well, 8% have a fractured hyoid bone. When you go to the, the situation, the statistics of people who have three fractures that we saw in Jeffrey Epstein's suicide, that number drops to 1 in 20. Only 1 in 20 from dead hang suicides result in these three fractures. And how often is that kind of fracture found in homicides? 34%, yeah. So one could argue that these kind of fractures are more likely to occur in a homicide than in a suicide. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, however, though, uh, when we discussed this stunt with an engineer, as you well know, we've had engineers here helping with this project, wanting to be as fair-minded as possible, after reviewing multiple studies, he came to the conclusion that a real-world scenario like we've created right here, um, in that scenario, about 121 pounds or 55 kilograms are what would be required at minimum to result in the three fractures sustained by Mr. Epstein. So we're aiming to achieve a far lower number than even necessary to ensure death by hanging because we want to be as, as fair-minded as possible and take the lowest number, the lowest barrier to entry, um, because we don't, know, we don't know how any of this is going to turn out. And I want the folks at home to understand that this stunt is not something that should be tried at home. You are, in fact, an untrained professional. 
Stephen, I understand that you've gone to great lengths to prepare for this evening, including the incorporation of some unconventional training methods. Yeah, that's true. I mean, unconventional for most, maybe. Uh, not for me. I've been working with personal trainers for a long time uh, from Hollywood. Um, someone who I've worked with, he's trained, uh, uh, worked with Chris Hemsworth and, um, and Chris Evans, um, all the Chris's. And uh, I, I've been training for a long time. You know, I don't take these things lightly, uh, certainly not these stunts. And um, we've been strengthening what we need to strengthen and, and, and trying to close up any holes in my, uh, in my professional stunt, uh, stuntman game. And I think we've done that. And I believe we have some footage of that now. When I train, it's a preparation of my mind as much as my body. I train for unlimited power, absolute endurance, bottomless stamina, unmeasured grit. This is about unleashing the power of the truth, mastering the fear, shaping your destiny, strengthening the neck. Through the process of mastering one's fear, one masters oneself. Today, I will test the limits of the human body, of the human mind, and above all, primarily the neck. You master your fears, you master yourself. And all this is just as much preparation for my body as it is my mind. 90% of it is 100% mental. I truly am standing before a champion. I also understand that you've been on a very strict diet, Stephen. Is that correct? That is correct. Yeah, you do your homework, Audio Wade. Um, it's been pretty much nothing but oyster crackers and, and actual oysters, so nothing else. Of course, in a stunt like this, there is a lot that could go wrong. What are you most worried about tonight, sir? Well, you know, um, you'd think that I'd be more worried in hanging myself than I am, uh, but uh, G. Morgan Jr. left a bottle of half a bottle of Tramadol, and um, we have uh, someone on watch for the Clinton, so I, I actually feel, I, you know what, I feel pretty good about it. I really do. That's certainly good to hear. Uh, something else very important to consider is that reports show that Jeffrey Epstein, in fact, hung himself from a rope of bed sheets that he fashioned from tearing and tying himself, which is notable considering the lack of any tools or sharp edges in his cell. In order to estimate how long this would take and subsequently determining how long the security cameras would have had to malfunction for this elaborate suicide to go unnoticed, we have even Brendan standing by to begin fashioning a rope live as we speak. Hi. Brendan? If that isn't your definition of riveting broadcasting, throw out your dictionary and may Christ himself have mercy on your hellbound soul. With an event like this, security is always a concern. That's why we've put one of our guards on full-time Clinton watch. Officer Gibbon, how do things look out there? You truly can never be too safe. Now, along with safety, a huge concern of this team's is accuracy. Our field reporter, Tom Finnegan, spoke earlier with Stephen Knieven's technical advisor, Corder Black Garrett. Well, we're here with technical supervisor, Corder Black Garrett, and, uh... Yeah, don't watch, watch out for that. Watch out. Come on. Come on up here. What's going on here today? So we got an 8x8 recreation of the cell that Jeffrey Epstein was sleeping in at the time of his not suicide. Uh, this here is a bunk. It's to recreate the bunk. Uh, we also got some walls here that are painted gray uh, to repro uh, you know, the gray. It's, it's, it's prism. So uh, also right over here, if you look over here, uh, this is where we're going to tie the bed sheet. Mm -hmm. And that bed sheet's going to be connected to uh, Mr. Stenevel, uh, you know, his, his neck, right? This, uh, this apparatus here is going to be what we're using to measure the force on his neck 
It's gonna be measured in kilograms. We're looking for 55 total to break his neck. We have a backup here measuring the tension on the rope. Here, this is a, this is a diameter here, and uh, we're looking for 55 total to break his neck. And then right below that, that's the suicide zone, all right? Suicide zone, that's where he's gonna recreate, he's gonna get on his knees, and he's gonna lean right into the suicide. Just to recreate exactly, specifically, the events leading up to Jeffrey Epstein's suicide. And who was that? He's the guy. This broadcast promises to be a learning experience for all of us. Stephen, you've mentioned the training that went into this evening, but that's not all the precautions this team has taken, correct? No, no, I really want people to understand that there's a whole team that makes this happen behind the scenes, you know, and I don't want to take all uh, of the glory for that. Um, they've worked tirelessly, and earlier uh, this week they actually did uh, a dry run with a test subject, and I think, I think we have some footage of that. And since then, I understand you've worked out some kinks. Dear God, I hope so. Yeah. One unknown that must be accounted for in an event like this is the weather. Earlier this evening, half-Asian lawyer Bill Richmond took a look and made certain that this stunt would not be derailed. Here we have his report. Well, as you can see, we've got a slight overcast here during the day, which will burn off towards the evening as we fluctuate between 50 and 60 percent humidity, with only a bare whisper of wind throughout the day at no more than one mile per hour. We're not expecting any precipitation. As a result, I'd say we have a near picture-perfect November evening for doing stunts, which, as you know, is completely irrelevant since we'll be filming inside of an air-conditioned studio. Now, Stephen, that seems almost to have been totally unnecessary. You know, it seems so until you understand that uh, we, we have to put them on retainer and we try to get our money's worth. So thanks, Half Asian Bill. No, I understand. Uh, with a monster like Epstein, it's easy to believe that all America rejoiced at his demise. But sometimes we forget the victims of all this. Real folks upon whom Epstein's predatory nature inflicted a living hell. Tom Finnegan has spoken to those who have been negatively affected by Epstein's death. Here is what he heard. Jeffrey was a good man, a real facilitator. It made my life a hell of a lot simpler. Anytime I needed to escape the wife, I'd call Jeffy Boy and he'd fly me out to the island. That was great. It's made my life immeasurably more difficult in finding uh, young girls to have sex with. A damn shame. A damn shame is what this is. A year ago, we were all on top of the world. Then suddenly, it all came crashing down like a house of cards, pulled over by a yappy young man. Crying shame. Hmm. An absolute tragedy. Murder. Plain and simple, folks. That's what it was. Sexy, teenager-adjacent murder. I tried to stop her. I said to her, Hillary, don't go suicide my friend now, you hear? But she didn't listen. Very sad. There you have it, folks. As they say, we never fully know how our actions are affecting others. Right, Stephen? Yeah, sometimes it's tough to know how it affects real folks out in the real world, and uh, it's, it's heartbreaking. Truer words, perhaps, never spoken. I believe it's time for you to head back and get ready for the stunt, so uh, go ahead and be safe. Thank you. Thank you very much, Audrey Wade. I appreciate it. Thank you. Godspeed for me. Is it? We go here? Just. Yeah. Just you know, start. I'll go. You can. You know, I'm going to go this way. That's, that's perfect. Earlier today, Tom Finnegan spoke with someone with a special insight into Epstein. Here's that interview now. Yes, I'm here with uh, someone who knew Jeffrey Epstein, who could be considered a confidant. He is this many. Uh, Timmy, thank you for being here. Hi, happy to be here. And what are your initial thoughts on the suicide of Jeffrey Epstein? Mm, I like the orange bedsheets. Yes, the orange bedsheets. And do you, in fact, think he did kill himself? I saw Santa Claus at the mall. Yes, there you have it. He saw Santa at the mall. Back to you. Ladies and gentlemen, we are moments away from the attempt by Stephen Knieven to recreate the suicide of Jeffrey Epstein. But first, we will have a quick word from our sponsors. And remember, folks, please, for the love of everything holy and just, tweet using the hashtag Epstein didn't kill himself and visit louderwithcrowder.com slash mug club. Use promo code Epstein for $20 off. We will return in a moment with the daredevil himself, Stephen Knieven, answering your tweets live.
there's definitely a, a racist history to Thanksgiving. It's a genocidal holiday. Thanksgiving. Live. rounds or 15 that's erroneous as my new all-steel ppq5 match has a 17 round magazine plus one in the chamber with the best ergonomics in the business i'm capable of putting a shot right between your eyes at 40 yards away so you have to ask yourself one question do you feel lucky well do ya punk Louder with Crowder Studios, protected exclusively by Walther. What's your home defense plan? When it comes to safety, there's no substitute for a quality firearm. And if you're a gun owner, there's no replacement for firearms legal protection. Firearms Legal Protection provides lawful gun owners an uncapped legal defense program, 24-7 emergency hotline, access to a network of over 2,500 experienced attorneys, legal education on firearm laws in your state via our mobile app, and plans to protect you every step of the way if you are involved in a self-defense incident. Visit firearmslegal.com slash LWC today. Hey everyone, Whistleblower 22 here. You may know that Joe Biden was recently seen with a blood-filled left eye during a climate town hall. To a normie, this is just more proof that this actual f***ing baby boomer is too old to support a closed circulatory system. While this is true, the more important truth we'll hear is that- Mom, I'm recording! Is that this answers? The reptilian question. This autist on poll pointed out the similarities between Joe Biden and a horned lizard with this disgusting ability to squirt blood from its eye. Uncle Joe must have felt threatened by so many questions and just couldn't suppress his natural instincts. I shouldn't even have to mention the other obvious similarity that old creepy Joe shares with a horny lizard. <clears throat> Thanks for watching. If you want to support me, you can pledge to my GoFundMe and help my command center move to a better space to make videos. Currently, I can only work on videos at night while my mom is asleep. Until next time, whistleblower out. Live, and uh, I believe we have some tweets here uh, to take a look at. Okay. Uh, here we have S. Crowder. I wish Stephen was a victim of Pedophile Island. I guess I'll have to set her for him hanging himself on camera. Your response. Um, I'm not, we'll just, are we good? This is what happens when you do a live broadcast I audio. Uh, uh, I'm not at all surprised, honestly. I wish I could say that I was. And you know what? It's actually not called Pedophile Island. Okay, we were the ones who sort of coined that. That's not the official name. So just, you know, water off a duck's back. Understood. And we have the next week. Got to be here. Yeah. Oh, got to read there. Uh, here we have Jamie. I told my dad about how S. Crowder was going to try get to kill himself on live stream, on live stream, like how Epstein did. And my dad told me to tell Stephen, like Red Foreman would say, you're a dumbass. 
Well, unless she's saying that her dad actually is Red Foreman, um, I don't really care all that much because his opinion doesn't mean a whole lot to me. We have engineers here, uh, we have a nurse here on staff, and I feel pretty confident about what we're looking to achieve. So, you know, Jamie, you can, um, can go fornicate yourself. Well said. Next tweet. Stephen Crowder, I am very hard right now. Your thoughts? That's his problem, not mine. Good point. Next tweet. Here we have Scott Brompton. I don't think Epstein killed himself, but I hope you do, you puffy-faced piece of shit. Yeah. Your response. Well, you know, I get that a lot, but if I were puffy-faced, I wouldn't be able to fit in this neck brace. Okay, Scott? So I don't know what you have to say to that, but maybe we'll get a follow-up tweet. I don't think we're going to. A wonderful point. Well, uh, we have just a few moments before the big stunt, so let's check in with our officer on Clinton Watch. Officer Gibbon. Well, it's always, uh, let's see. So now before the big stunt, let's go to the tail of the tape. Here we go. Stephen Knieven has a distinct advantage in both height and weight, meaning that if Epstein wasn't able to produce the kind of force necessary to kill himself, Stephen may in fact be able to. We will certainly see how this affects the outcome of tonight's event. Stephen, I believe it's time for you to go and prepare for the stunt. Yeah. And uh, any, any last thoughts? Well, I should, probably should have done that before you had me read those useless tweets. That's what I was planning on doing. But uh, I do want to say, too, that the number on there is wrong in the tail of the tape. It's, uh, it's 219 now. I put on some LBs, but happens to the best of us. I'm Duly noted. Ready. Please. Please. All right. So Mr. Knieven is approaching the set. We do have trained paramedics standing by. And again, that number, folks, that we are shooting for is 55 kilograms we will be measuring at the neck as well as the tension of the rope. And it uh, looks like he is being fitted with a heart monitor, getting uh, that all set to go. We have the replica, again, of the orange bed sheets that will be wrapped around Mr. Knieven's neck. This, again, in line with exactly what uh, the... Exactly what Mr. Epstein would have experienced. We have the cell here, and uh, the, the sheet is about to be placed around uh, Mr. Knieven's neck. But first, his pupils are being checked there. All right, and again, we'll be measuring for 55 kilograms. 55 kilograms we'll be testing at the neck and on the tension of the rope. All set. All right, waiting for the go ahead from Mr. Knieven himself. All set. All set. All right. All set. All right, and we have the go-ahead. Everyone, it is go time. Again, 55 kilograms is what we will be looking for on the rope and at the neck. He is leaning. We have 22 at the rope. We have, let's see, yes, 28 on the neck. 22 on the rope. 22 on the rope. A steady 22. Switch the Okay, hold on. Okay. We're getting the signal to stop. We're getting the signal to stop. We need to switch this. Sorry, something went wrong. What do we have on the rope? 22 on the rope. The rope is kilograms. Achieved. We're good. Are we able to achieve? Okay. So one thing I want to I want to note. Um, this is the most important measurement audio wave, but this is probably the least accurate device that we have. So this is designed because the compression at the neck is going to be dispersed around the neck. The number is going to be lower than this uh, monitor right here directly on the cord. So you'll notice that the number is significantly lower at the neck, significantly higher at the cord. The real life number is probably between those two. But even then, uh, leading, well, we got to 22 kilograms? 22 kilograms. Okay. 22. I'm going to try this again. Uh, and I think, I think that I can actually, hold on one second, I think I can actually get this pretty close. Um, in the spirit of, of being fair-minded, I think I can get this pretty close. I All think set. I can do it. Okay. All right, Mr. Ready? appears to be ready. All set on both. Waiting for the signal from him. All right, and we have the signal all set to go. We have Mr. Knieven leaning bed. again. Again, this is go time, putting his foot against the bed. He's pushing. We have 16.1 at the neck, 37 at the neck, 38 on the rope, 38 on the rope, 23 as a high on the neck. We have, again, we are shooting for 55 kilograms. We are not even okay. close. 41 is the peak right. on the rope. What's again, the, the signal to stop. 41 on the rope. 41 on the rope, what do we have on the neck? 23 was the high on the neck. Okay, so the high, it's 23 kilograms on the neck, 
43 on the rope, which is the best that we've had. I don't know if you guys could see I was pressing up against the bed. Of course, I probably have more friction on a plywood panel here than he would have in a prison. Uh, we got pretty close. Um, I want to explore every option here and, uh, and, and do everything I can to see if we can actually hit this number. And I actually, I do think that I could probably hit this number if, uh, if I really push it. I just need a little bit of time to catch my breath. Oh, that was 44? 44, 44 and 22 on the, on the rope. Yep. Okay. 22 on the neck. 22 on the neck. All right. So on the neck, that's not even close. No, not even close. But the rope was close. The rope was close. So the real number is probably somewhere in the 30s. Yes. Okay. Which means you're still alive. All right. We have, the sa we have everything, the safety mechanisms that we need. Oh, yes, we do. O2? Perfect. Okay. Good. Good. All right. All right. Let's get, uh, let's get the meter set. Let me know when we're good. I'm going to go for one last try. All clear. Go. Set. Ladies and okay. gentlemen, Mr. Kneven is going for one last try. We are all set to go, and we have the signal. As Mr. Kneven leans, we can, we, again, we are looking for 55 right, kilograms. 13. We have 20, 25, what on, what if I 25 on the rope. Oh, okay. oh and Look, Mr. Kneven appears to have collapsed. Oh, he's, How about that? he is simulating the having been oh, choked out. What am I in here? 20, yeah. Again, we, we have peaked again at what if I go, hold on. 25 what if I go like this? on the rope. Nope, nope, Okay, Jeff, Jeff, you have okay. to wheelbarrow me. Okay, okay. You have to wheelbarrow me. Mr. Carter, Get my wheel to be Here we go. Uh, requesting a wheelbarrow move. 55, 56, uh, okay. 56. 56. We, we achieved 56 on the neck and 58 on the road. You're out. You're out. Ah. Oh, man. Mr. Crowder is rolling. Mr. Crowder is being addressed by the men of the Again, the high on that was 62, which is far beyond what is necessary to fracture the neck cartilage. 58 on the neck. 58 on the neck. Mr. Crowder again has collapsed. He, right. is, he appears to be okay. Mr. Crowder appears to be okay. Did you check my pupils? Did you check my pupils? He, he is requesting to be checked in the pupils. 62.9. 62.9 on the rope. My goodness, we are testing the limits here. Mr. Kniebin is approaching now. Okay, hold on. Audio wait. Oh. I don't think I've ever felt so alive. I have felt more alive, but this uh, I mean, is painful. Uh, painful, but I don't think I would suicide it. Mr. Kniebin, there appears to have been a lot of commotion over there. What do you think went well, wrong? Let me fix my cape. Uh, please, please. Okay. What were you asking? Hold uh, on. Let me get this off. There, so I want to take my helmet. Thank you. Yes, there appears to have been a, a lot of commotion. What, what do you think went wrong? Um, good question. I'm still a little fuzzy. Uh, I think a better question is what went right. Uh, it seemed like everything uh, kind of went wrong there. Um, the meter was uh, uh, maladjusted to pounds uh, initially, and that's where we were getting. I thought there was too much of a discrepancy. Mm. We're we were kind of expecting it to be not as heavy on the neck because, of course, there wouldn't be as much from the compression, heavier on the cord. I heard those first numbers out there. I panicked. I thought maybe we had a calibration wrong. It just turns out that one of them reset to pounds. Mm. So that went wrong. Um, and I've had to question some life decisions that have led me to this point. Audio weight. Well, Mr. Kniven, uh, the viewers have to know, do you believe that Jeffrey Epstein could have killed himself? Oh, boy, that's a loaded question. <laughs> uh, well, I'll say this. For everyone watching, what we really set out to achieve tonight was to hopefully show you a real-world scenario where what we've been told about the Jeffrey Epstein death uh, doesn't seem to have been entirely accurate. I certainly have even, like, we didn't even talk about the hyoid bone, but we passed that really easily. Could have done that without the neck brace. It's obviously, uh, that, that's not the number that people should be concerned about. What we set out to prove was um, that people who are skeptical at all doesn't mean that you're a crazy conspiracy theorist. I think your criticisms are valid. And uh, we wanted to put on a show, hopefully give you the ability to draw your own conclusions and, uh, and give you one hell of a discount, which, uh, you know, we have offered tonight uh, with the promo code Epstein at ladderwithcredit.com slash mug club. And uh, you're... you're you're signing up tonight, continues to fund uh, episodes like this. I'm really just buying time because I, I, I've had to think it through. I, I will say this, I will say this, in, in the spirit of trying to be uh, fair and as objective as possible, 
if Jeffrey Epstein uh, had been able to fashion a rope from bed sheets, uh, which takes uh, approximately nine to 15 minutes going completely unnoticed in his cell, uh, and if he were able to achieve the exact right angle and uh, have somebody wheelbarrow him in his cell, potentially a cellmate, uh, and if he were able to do that and snap his neck before he passes out, as that only takes you know, about three to five seconds, as we know, considering the tension, um, and all the guards fell asleep, I think it is, I think it's, it could be possible. It could be possible. If all of those conditions are met, and those conditions would need to be met, um, I was trying with everything I had by myself. Um, I wasn't able to hit that number. I do think that uh, in, in being objective, it is, a, it is a possibility as to whether it's the most likely scenario people will have to, uh, people will have to decide for themselves. Well, there you have it, folks. Perhaps we'll never know what really happened that fateful night. That's it for us. Again, be sure to tweet using the hashtag Epstein didn't kill himself and go to louderwithcrowder.com slash mug club and enter promo code Epstein for $20 off. Thank you for joining us and good night. You guys say one thing? Sweetheart, we did it. I love you. I love you. Thank you.